Our sponsor today is Winty. Winty is an aviation themed t shirt business designing and printing aviation related graphics for pilots, aviation businesses, and aviation enthusiasts worldwide. Using DTG direct to garment printing technology, Winty can print one or 100 plus garments upon request within a reasonably low turnaround time, including customer submitted graphics. Contact Winty Aviation T shirt art by visiting winty.com today to find out how a custom aviation graphic can be printed for you. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome to Savvy Central Radio. This is your host, Christina Nitschman. Each week on Savvy, we host new individuals and business owners, inviting them to share their expertise, dreams, and lessons learned in their field of business. Our guest today is Lisa Mannion. Lisa is the president of WriteOnCreative.com. She's a marketing content strategist specializing in powerfully communicating your marketing message to increase results. As the creator of the new marketing model for success, Lisa is changing the way we market today with a relationship-first approach that is friendly and effective. Lisa is also the recipient of the Charles Schwab Financial Literacy Award in the Hot Mamas competition. To learn more about Lisa, visit www.writeoncreative.com. That is W-R-I-T-E on creative.com. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for coming to Savvy Central Radio. How are you today? I am fantastic, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I am so excited that Jennifer Lawnmower, our guest a couple shows back, and really told us that we should get on the phone with you and have you on over, that you are the master of copywriting. And that is one subject that I feel is very important that rarely gets looked at and paid attention to. So tell our audience a little bit about your background, how it came to be that you work in copywriting and such. Absolutely. Well, fast forwarding to today, I'm known as the business marketing architect, and I really am a copywriting and content strategist for mission-driven entrepreneurs. And what that means is, throughout all of my years of experience, I've combined my advertising agency skills, and my radio marketing master skills, and all of these other fantastic writing skills that I have acquired over the years to create my own business. So I've been in business for about 10 years now and I really focus on your content and strategy to make sure that we are creating messages that connect with our ideal clients and more importantly move our prospects to become paying clients and making sure that your content truly has a strategy, truly connects, comes from a place of true service and moves you forward. That's kind of where we are today but I have always been drawn to the written word. So for as long as I can remember, even as a small child, as soon as I could write, I was writing really bad poetry. Probably wasn't as bad as I think, but, you know, Mm -hmm. playing with words and having fun. And in fourth grade, a gal pal and I created the first ever school newspaper for our elementary school on a mimeograph machine. And I know I'm dating myself a bit, (laughs) but... um, (laughs) That's just to show you how my passion for words continued to grow. And then in high school and in college, I was the advertising manager for the school papers and the lead reporter. And then I worked at radio stations again and advertising agencies. And in 2003, I decided, you know, I want to really do things on my own terms. And I want to focus more on the messaging because I just saw so many people that were missing the mark with their messaging and they really weren't understanding how important their content and their copy was. So I, that's when Write on Creative was born and the rest, I guess, is history. Mm, I like that about messaging and you also mentioned prior about moving a client toward being a paying client because I think what I've gathered from a lot of entrepreneurs is they kind of assume the first time they get someone on the phone that if I didn't close it with them right there, it's not going to happen and that's not necessarily the case as Lisa Menini, a past guest of, of ours, said that it takes sometimes up to six times of dealing with the person before they feel comfortable enough to move towards the purchasing portion but I want to talk about your messaging portion because here Here's something I did in the beginning. I started my company, a finance consulting receivables company, and I said, we can stop the hemorrhaging of your cash flow. And it wasn't until I asked good friends, what do you think about my copy? And they said, oh my gosh, I think blood and guts and yuck. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, the power of words is so profound, right? So we have to be very, very careful about our word choice and we have to make sure that it is going to connect with who we really want to serve. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I, I like that point that you bring up because I had no idea that it's going to make people run for the hills, the very idea of using the word hemorrhage. Right. Yeah. So that's fascinating. So what what do you mean? Because I've heard it said that you say traditional copywriting formula just isn't working anymore. What do you mean by that? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, and it really does tie in directly with word choice like you were just talking about. You you didn't realize that the word hemorrhage wasn't going to attract who you really wanted to work with. It wasn't how you meant it, but once you got outside perspective, you thought, oh, maybe I could say that a little differently. So the reason I feel like a lot of the traditional copywriting and marketing formulas aren't working is because there is this antiquated formula that is being taught especially in the copywriting arena, called the problem, agitate, and solve formula. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is that we're supposed to pinpoint the problems of our ideal clients and then kind of agitate them and poke at those pain points and then come in like the big marketing hero with whatever it is that we're offering. And that's never, ever felt right to me. It's felt really disconnected, but it's the only thing that was being taught. So I'd have people come to me struggling with this and saying, I don't know why my content isn't working. I've followed the advice of all these gurus and they're telling me this whole problem agitate and solve formula and it's supposed to work, but it's not. And and we just kind of have to go back to basics because if that formula didn't resonate with the people trying to write copy using the formula, there's absolutely no way that the messages they were creating based on a broken model would attract their ideal clients. I love that because I've heard very often also from my old mentors as well, not so much the agitate portion, but really finding out what the problem is of your ideal client. And then if they're not aware, they even have it kind of bringing it to their attention. And uh, I really kind of have a problem operating from that standpoint myself. I just kind of go with the flow kind of just work with them and get to know them as real people and friends. And then when they get to see the benefits of what we offer, they just kind of come to us. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. And you're right. It it feels manipulative, that that manipulation, that agitation, that, oh my gosh, this is your problem. I mean, if we think about it, mm -hmm. how many times do we ever respond to someone really pointing out our problems? I mean, especially as women, I, I think I get a little defensive. I'm not going to want to do work with someone because if it's coming from that, like, oh, you you know, this is wrong and this is what you need to do to fix it standpoint, it seems condescending and manipulative. I like the condescending. I hadn't thought of that, but that is indeed true. It does feel like, oh, you're the old gracious person above me who's going to fix all my problems. And yeah, you're right. It absolutely doesn't feel better. What would you suggest as a better model? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I'm so excited and proud of this because I've actually created what's called the new marketing model for success. And it teaches people how to market with integrity from a place of service first. So my formula is the challenge solution and invitation formula, which really promotes relationships. And it's so simple. It's just like having coffee or a glass of wine with a like-minded girlfriend. And we acknowledge each other's challenge and we understand that something's going on. So it does sort of speak to the problem, but it doesn't bring it to the surface in that manipulative way. It's just an acknowledgement. Yes. Okay. You've got this going on. That could be a challenge, but here's the solution. And the solution comes in the form of your products and services and what you're doing to serve the world in your really big way with your message. And then the final piece is just a friendly invitation. No more hard sell, icky tactics, buy now kind of thing, but more of a friendly invitation. You know, if this sounds good to you mm -hmm. and you'd like the solution that I have to your challenge, then let's do some business together. I'm here to be of service. Mm, I like that. I'd like to see how that would play out in a real situation. Okay, how about I come to you and I say, I have this website and I don't know why people aren't coming to it. And then you happen to read about the hemorrhaging part and I can help your cash flow. What would be your response to what you think is not working and how we could go forward and fix it? Oh, that's a good question. Well, first of all, I would ask you very specifically who your ideal client is and who you want to attract. And then once you tell me who you're speaking to, I'm guessing they're not going to be connecting to the whole hemorrhaging language. So we're going to really reverse engineer and think about how 
your ideal clients want to be spoken to, what they relate to, what makes them tick, and what would make them respond to you and come to you and want to have that energetic exchange of doing business with you. So we'd look at that headline and we would scratch it (laughs) and we would create something different for you that really embodies the service that you're bringing into the world and the benefits that your ideal clients will get from working with you. Mm, I love that because what you're focusing on there is about the other person serving, 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 helping, 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 which really comes through to me. And then I'm feeling like, oh, really? I love what you're saying right there. Please help me. And it makes you feel that pull to, okay, you really, you really have my back. You're really here to help me, not just use me. Exactly. And see, that's the shift that we're looking for. That's why I'm so passionate about this relationship-based marketing model. And it's so important. And honestly, the challenge, solution, and invitation formula can be used in any situation, spoken, written, any transaction. It's just the way that we should be doing business in general. We should be coming at it to help each other solve any challenge we have going on in our lives, to provide a really solid solution that comes from a place of service, and extend a friendly invitation if it feels right so we can play together and do business. You know what the old model feels like to me? The old model feels like a car salesman thing, you know, where they're trying to pressure mm-hmm. you into the car. And and in fact, just about six months ago, we went into a place and they were actually sweating on both sides of their face, like pouring in sweat as they were trying to get us oh. to take the car. And I was just like, honey, it ain't happening today. It really isn't. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> But I could tell, and I don't know if his paycheck is weighing on the fact that we buy the car or not, but just the way he was doing it was so icky that there was no way that we were going to get the car the way they were doing it. And it's sad because it might have been a good car for us, but not the way they were selling it. Exactly. And it's really interesting that you bring that up because I just got this direct mail piece in the mail. I'm a non-smoker, by the way, Mm -hmm. for cigarettes. I don't know how much money they spent on it, but they have all of these gigantic, you know, hideous disclaimers about how awful it is. And then you open it up and then there's some coupons inside and it was just so negative and desperate. You could just feel that energy from it. And besides the strong copy the company would need to work on, what else would need to be in place in order to have an effective marketing strategy? Oh, I love this question too. I'm just so passionate about this. So there's another advertising and marketing. It's an, it's an age old adage that says that copy, which is the written part of all marketing, advertising, and promotional materials, is king. And I disagree. I actually believe that copy is queen and is the feminine energy of your marketing. Hmm. And strategy, which is usually the big missing piece, is king. That's the masculine piece of the marketing. And just like a relationship, the two have to be working together in order to get results. So for example, you can have the world's best copy out there. Say maybe it's a sales letter and it's really awesome, but you have no strategy to get people to it, it's not going to work. Likewise, you could have a really awesome strategy to get people to your website and then they get there and the copy on your site just doesn't land or work with your ideal client. So it's not going to work either. So there's, there's usually those two pieces that have to work together. One or the other is missing and that's why people aren't getting great results. So you have to marry the two. You absolutely have to have strategy and really strong, juicy copy. Hmm, I've never heard those two combined before. That's great because to have one, uh, often people will get their website together, a wonderful Facebook page, Twitter page, but then not take the action behind it or have the strategy behind it, the full plan to put it in action and make it happen. So it, it makes sense to me that the two would have to marry. Yeah, and people just are often missing those pieces to the marketing puzzle, right? So you have to bring it all together to be successful. And one of another one of my pet peeves, I should say, because I kind of get on a soapbox about a few things, but it's that oftentimes people are only teaching one piece of the puzzle and they're not giving the rest of those pieces. So I am really adamant about letting people know you have to have strategy, you have to have content, they have to work together or you're not going to succeed. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Mm, And I've seen that your philosophies are getting quite a bit of attention. Can you share how all that got started for you? I can. It's such a fun story because when you have a really, uh, I guess, just a a philosophy that resonates with people, it kind of takes on a life of its own and it spreads like wildfire, but in a good way. And so... I was featured on the cover of Aspire magazine, and that was actually when I told my whole story, pieces I mentioned to you about how I was always passionate about writing and 
starting the first school newspaper in elementary school on a mimeograph machine and all those things. And then I actually named my challenge, solution, and invitation formula. It's a process I had been using all along with people, but I hadn't named it. And as soon as I named it, challenge, solution, and invitation formula, the new marketing model for success, it took on a life of its own. And so Inc. Magazine interviewed me. That was fabulous. I've been the business feature in Dare Magazine. I'm doing tons of radio interviews, a regular guest on Experience Pros interviews, and my philosophies are being featured in two books. So in fact, just today, the launch happened for another book that I'm involved in. I'm just so excited about all of this because I know I'm on the right track. And when you start getting a ton of interviews about what you're sharing, Mm -hmm. you know you're able to help more people. And again, it's back to that place of true service and building those relationships and just making it a much easier process to market your big, gigantic mission in palatable messages that turn your prospects into paying customers. Mm, I love that. And if anyone would like to find out more about you and read some of these wonderful books and and things, where might they find out? Is a new book coming out? Is, is one of them out that they can go buy they, them? They can actually, the one that just coming out is called Wonder Women, How Western Women Will Save the World. And it's written by a couple of my fabulous colleagues, Phil Dyer and Jessica Eves Matthews. And they're identifying a lot of the traits of successful women. Mm -hmm. they're actually they've identified the superhero powers of successful women and I actually have my own superhero this is kind of fun but she's called the purple pen and she actually is out there to right the wrongs of of the marketing arena so my story and also my superhero is featured in the book it's a piece of all of that and one of the superhero traits that they've identified is integrity Mm -hmm. and so I'm that's really what the whole energy behind my messaging is I'm honored to be a part of that so they can get that on Amazon anybody that's interested it's going to be out there, you know, for some time. And it really is a fabulous business building book. Oh, I'm so excited you mentioned that because we just had Jessica on last month talking about her upcoming book. And I didn't know that you were part of it as well. I'm so excited. Well, and I am excited too. And I love that you attract such fabulous people. Jennifer Longmore is a fantastic colleague. Lisa Menini is also a colleague who I have the utmost respect for. And Jessica Eves Matthews and I are great friends and colleagues and beyond. So you attract some really amazing people. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so blessed. And so are we, the whole audience. Thank you guys for sharing. Actually, I see that Wonder Woman, How the Western Woman Will Save the World is being released today. Get your copy on Amazon.com. So what elements do copy do most people struggle with, would you say? Oh, my gosh. This I love. This is actually – this is part of – I know I get so excited and passionate about this, but this is really part of my program, How to Create Marketing Messages with Integrity, Attract Your Ideal Client with Your Authentic Voice. I walk people through these three components because they're missing the mark so many times. And the first component really is bringing our values back into business and into our lives. So it's identifying your core values and using those to create a personal mission statement as well as a business mission statement that are congruent, that work together. Because what happens is so many times people will just create a business mission statement that has nothing to do with their core values and there's a disconnect. So things aren't working together energetically to get the results that they'd hoped. And then they're not able to really tell their story to attract their ideal clients because there's that incongruency between their personal mission and their business mission. So we bring that all together. So they're very clear on exactly what they need to do to create their messaging. And then the second part is they're able to attract ideal clients instead of chasing not so ideal clients. So the missing component for most people is they haven't gotten really, really clear about who they want to serve. And so they're having some frustrating situations with not so ideal clients that can cause some headaches. So we move through all of that. So we're only working with the people we're meant to serve. We're having wonderful, fun, and mutually beneficial transactions with no more headaches. And then the final piece is just really bringing it all together to create marketing messages with integrity by using my challenge, solution, and invitation formula and making sure that you're speaking to your ideal client in a way that they're going to respond to. You're offering a really fabulous solution and you're extending that friendly invitation to take action. So I bring all of that together for people because after working with hundreds and hundreds of women, those were the stuck spots. And I'm like, okay, let's just blow through these. Let's put something together that's going to help you move forward and just get this done the right way. 
Mm. What would you say, Lisa, that prevents people from having or causes people to have a message that's not congruent with their mission statement and their own integrity? I really think it's not being clear on their values. I think we have to go back to basics. I think we have to identify what really motivates us in our core center, in our being, and share what those values are and bring them together in your mission statements for, again, both professional and personal. Mm, that, that's a great idea. I know last year or the year prior, I had heard, read this wonderful book that said before starting out anything in your business, write down your core values and what you most care about in life and then make sure that you have that added in your business or it's part of your business. Well, yes. And so I, I live what I call the freedom-based lifestyle. So I've specifically created a business that supports my values so I can work and play anywhere that I like. And one of my core values is freedom. So as long as I have my laptop and I have my cell phone or a landline that I can access, I can work and play anywhere in the world. So, and be of service to people too, of course. So that's really, really important. And the other thing to think about when we're looking at our values is that sometimes they shift and change a little bit as we grow as people. So you can revisit those. And I actually highly recommend that you revisit them because they may change. That's a really, really, really good point. And I like that you identify that freedom is a big portion. I've heard often that business owners love the idea of not being tied down, but then they build a business for themselves where they're attached to their computer 24-7 and never leave it. And that does not look like your ideal life. <laughs> Exactly. And that's why we have to just get back into the heart of everything with our values and make sure that we're building a business to support us and also to be of service. And so many people are missing that, but it's totally possible. I'm doing it. Many of my colleagues are doing it. So I think people forget that we can decide and take action and make it happen. And it really is that simple. Well, I mean, it takes hard work. I'm not going to lie about that ever, but it's, you know, you're going to roll up your sleeves and you're going to do some work, but you can do it. What for you made it change for you that you decided, hey, I'm just going to do this on my own and break out and start my own business? What was the deciding aha moment for you? Well, I was really tired of doing things on other people's terms and quite frankly, lining someone else's pockets. <laughs> it just really honestly, I would got to the burnout phase where I wasn't able to choose all of my clients, although I worked with some really wonderful people. I wanted to do things on my own terms. So now I don't accept all clients. I only accept ideal clients. And I'm blessed to be able to serve the people I'm meant to serve and to do things absolutely on my terms. And also to have created this whole new marketing model that's going to change the way we market forever. I mean, that's pretty enormous. And I knew something like this was happening. I didn't know exactly what it was going to be when I started my business 10 years ago, because as we know, things grow and change and evolve. But it's become even more wonderful than I ever imagined. It, isn't that something when you do something that follows your heart, that things just fall into place like it does? Yeah, it really is beautiful. I mean, it, I feel so extremely blessed every day that I'm able to do what I love and to help people do what they love even more effectively. Wow. And I want people to find out more about you and if necessary, work with you so that they can get the best message out there for themselves and build the business of their dreams. How might people work with you or find out more about you? Well, they can absolutely go to my website, which is writeoncreative.com, and it's W-R-I-T-E-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E.com. Oh, I think writeoncreative.com. So just wanted to make sure that you get the correct write in there. So writeoncreative.com. And I offer a free copywriting action plan there so people can improve their own messaging. And on my blog, there's all kinds of fun and free resources that you can use to build your business right away too. I love that sign, up, sign off of yours. When you write a letter or an email, you go, write on. <laughs> I do. I <laughs> Well, it's been so wonderful finding out more about marketing and a wonderful new way to approach it, which I love. It feels so much more authentic and real. And what last words of advice would you like to leave our listeners with as we end this interview? Well, I really would just love everyone to own their own message and, and infuse their values into everything that they're doing so they can create marketing messages with integrity. Because as soon as you do that, you're going to notice a really remarkable shift within your business because it will all be coming from a place of true service. You'll be building real relationships and attracting your ideal client. That is absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on Savvy Central Radio. Everyone, please go check out Lisa's website at www.writeoncreative.com. Thank you so much, Lisa, for all your help. And I love that you came on and shared your wisdom and knowledge. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Have a great day. Tune in this Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern, where our guest will be Martin Lindstrom, 2009 recipient of Time Magazine's World's 100 Most Influential People and author of the New York Times international bestseller, Biology. Savvy Central Radio is proud to host our fourth symposium. Join us in our new multi-part speaking series called Mastering the Influence Game, starting this fall in New York City. Every two months for the next several months, we'll be bringing you global cutting-edge experts in the field of influence, marketing, and media, designed to give entrepreneurs and small business owners the tools and strategies to take their business to the next level. To register and book your ticket today, go to masteringtheinfluencegame.eventbrite.com.